Welcome to Wesley Impact. I'm Keith Garner. Do you struggle sometimes to keep up with the changing world around us? Today I'll be speaking with someone who makes a living out of making sense of our ever-changing world. Thank you for joining us. Across all areas of our work, Wesley Mission interacts with thousands of young people and teenagers every year. Not only that, many of our volunteers are young people themselves and we employ staff whose job it is to find new and unique ways to ensure that young people that we seek to understand and serve are people that we care about and build a genuine connection with. We've always sought to connect with young people and in the time I've been leading this, this area, that certainly I've, I've been conscious of the continually changing atmosphere, the rapidity of change. When I begin my superintendency here at Wesley Mission, the best way to connect with the, the younger people of the day was via website and online chat rooms. Social media such as Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, none of that existed. Now, just 10 years later, a mere website is not enough. We have social media producers who spend most of their time on social media connecting with people online. Smartphones that we are so accustomed to today didn't exist 10 years ago. Today, touchscreen phones are the norm and children and young people, it seems, have an inherent knowledge of how they work. Today, I'll be talking to a social researcher whose job it is to study the behaviour of all people in our community, including younger people, interpreting their findings and then they use that knowledge in a way that can help organisations and people understand behavioural patterns and social trends. We'll also be joined by Grace Saunders to sing Man of Sorrows. Grace is an emerging Christian artist and I'm looking forward to seeing her later in the programme. My thoughts today focus upon the visit of Jesus to the home of two sisters and what a difference there is between they, the way they both react to him. Candice is someone who came into contact with Wesley Mission and we have the privilege of working with her. A young mother struggling to make ends meet, we were able to walk alongside Candice and in a way help her to gain and develop the skills she needed to be able to live the life that she's aspired to. Today, Candice is in full-time employment, is able to provide for her child and is leading a life full of purpose. This is Candice's story. I suppose it's, um, you can't control it. You'll feel so excited and um, nothing can get you down. And you can do, it can be quite dangerous, you know, like you can be in a car and want to speak. And then all of a sudden you'd be that low to the point where you're just like, life is just not worth it. It's never gonna get better. That's how you feel, like you feel like you're just not going to get better. And there's nothing better to do other than drink or take your life. The first time I realised I was ill was actually when I had my first daughter. I actually got postnatal depression and then it led from postnatal depression into more problems. Like um, I didn't realise I had postnatal depression and I, they didn't, I don't think they realised either. I think they just wanted to name it bipolar because my mum suffers with bipolar. So um. But yeah, like my moods were very um, up and down. To tell you the truth, I don't really remember when I was sick. Like I remember being sick, but I don't remember things happening. Um, like in the, things went so fast, it would be like a year of depression. And then I'd become well and it seemed like it was only like a couple of weeks of sickness. It was crazy. So when I was depressed, you know, like I would always sleep a lot. Like, and I found myself thinking that my daughter could make her own breakfast in the morning. I used to have really bad suicidal thoughts, mainly because of the drinking. Wesley Mission, um, I suppose um, they came into my life because um, I felt that I couldn't manage behaviours with my children. They come into your home and you know they help you get your life back on track. They have contact with a lot of a variety of things like um, you know play groups to meet other parents um, they also can help you with um, things like um, behavior management courses like one two three um, you know the steps of behavior like you know I do that a lot still now it's quite funny it took a lot to me to take at first especially when they need to tell you 
what's going on, you know, like your house may be messy or your floors are so unclean, it's, um, they tell you, they have to tell you. She come around the next week and she was so amazed. She was like, oh, you cleaned your room, you know, you cleaned your carpet, it smells so good, you know, and I was being intent. And I felt great. Working um, for me is a, the best step I've ever taken in my life. So I've been working at my work over at Eastern Creek Hotel for um, going on a year now. Um, and it's such a good feeling um, working where I am. I feel great getting up in the morning you know, putting on my t-shirt, putting on my shoes, putting on my name badge and, you know, it gives you that sense of um, knowing that you're worth something. My goal is to um, keep my job, obviously, <laughs> but I would love to be a manager. And I recently just got my certificate in hospitality, so that was a goal and I got that. Also, I never thought I'd ever get my licence and I have. Just pick up the phone, call for help, that's what I did. Even if you feel that it's the lowest you've ever been. Just pick up the phone. Wesley is always going to help. They're there for you. Mummy said it was not safe to go home. She said we would have to camp in the car. For $35 this winter, Wesley Mission can give a homeless family food, blankets and clothes. Please donate urgently at wesleymission.org.au donate. When are we going home, Mum? If you'd like to find out more about uh, that particular work, the work with those who are homeless, or if we can be of help to you, please don't hesitate to be in touch. The email address on the screen, Impact TV at wesleymission.org and the website wesleymission.org.au. Our guest today is social researcher, media commentator, TEDx speaker and business consultant on all things relating to young people, youth culture and that broader sphere. Welcome Claire Madden and thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much. Look, you're recognised as being uh, someone who puts a great emphasis in, uh, into that next generation. Mm. I think it's important to ask from the outset, whatever is a social researcher? Yeah, a social researcher is someone who looks at the data and the social trends and analyses it to help organisations better understand people today and how to best engage. Do you think it's, it, it, it's, I mean, I suppose the principles have always been there, but is it more necessary today to understand those trends than perhaps in the past? Well, I think today it's unprecedented the speed, the scale and the scope of change. So being uh, aware of of the technology change, the demographic change, the generational change, because it's moving so quickly, I think it's more important than ever to be, be aware. It'd be easy to get left behind, wouldn't it, really, in that melee? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. How, do, how do, do, do Christians relate to all of this? Because I think we, we put a great emphasis in our preaching, our teaching, you know, that we believe in those things that are always the same and always true. Yeah, and absolutely. here you come along as a Christian yourself yeah. saying, you know, we've really got to be with it at the other end of the scale too. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as Christians, there's the unchanging truth of the gospel. Yes. And I guess the challenge um, is to communicate it in a way that's relevant to today's culture. So how do we communicate it in a way that makes sense to the people um, of today? And so taking that unchanging truth and perhaps communicating it in changed new ways to best engage. And you were yourself involved for many years in, in youth ministry, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a big proportion of my life in developing, investing into the next generation. Absolutely love them. They're an amazing generation. So what, are, what challenges do this emerging, we're calling an emerging generation, have to face that are different than the past? Yeah, I think there's greater complexity today than ever before as a young person growing up. If you even think about how social media has changed their world, they're from the youngest of age now being a personal brand manager. Yeah. So they're in their teenage years trying to work out who they are but at the same time needing to project an image out there of, of who they want to be seen as and whether that be, and, and need the affirmation, need the likes. So whether it be, you know, through um, how funny they are or how good that Instagram post is or whatever it might be, I think it's, it's far greater working out who you are in times of, um, yeah, these times today. I mean, young people working out what their LinkedIn page is going to say and what their Facebook is going yeah. to present them at is, is all part of that image making, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Look, um, how can, therefore, parents and grandparents who might feel 
who might just feel in danger of being left behind yeah. by this. How, how can they handle all this? Yeah, it can be a little bit overwhelming, I think, because it's not the same as how our parents' generation grew up. It's changed so dramatically. And so I think parents can feel like they don't understand it, but I guess the best thing to do is to take an interest in young people's world and ask them questions, find out about the apps they're using or the way that they connect with their friends or what their favourite YouTube videos are or, and take that interest and be willing to learn from them and, and then help guide and direct them in the, in the way they make decisions and in their values formation in life as well. So they still absolutely need the role of parents more than ever, I think, mm. but um, not to be afraid of their world, which it does look different, but... But learn and and all of us can be kind of shocked at the next stage. I mean, I was shocked at, at Wesley. We, we have a, a, a restaurant, cafe, bistro uh, with a barista there. And uh, somebody told me, I said, well, I, I, on my app, I let them know. I said, what do you mean on your <laughs> app? He said, as I arrive at the station, I press this app and my coffee gets prepared so that when I walk in, it's... Hand. And I thought, my gosh, I thought I knew something about what was changing. <laughs> it's constantly changing. Constantly. And that it's, it's getting quicker all the time, isn't it? that expectation for instantaneous and that the coffee can be prepared on, on your way by, by pushing, pushing a button on an app. So there's, the speed is constantly accelerating. So would you acknowledge then, then in all of that that there's some frightening aspects of that in that it raises people's kind of what they expect society, the world, to provide for them? Absolutely, and I think also we can just become so wired as though we always need to be on our devices and always need to be busy as though being busy gives us meaning or makes us productive, but actually busyness and productivity are, are separate things. And so we can just get so caught up in, you know, checking emails or you know, social media or whatever it might be that, that we don't take time for reflection in life. Look, in your public speaking, you talk about the intergenerational experience with glass. What's all that about? Oh, yeah, well, glass is just an interesting example of how quickly things have changed. So when I was growing up, mum would say, Keep your fingers off the glass. Don't leave any grubby finger marks. And rightly so. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but glass today is becoming a medium of communication in itself. So increasingly we're projecting visual data onto glass, mm. such as heads-up display units sure. in cars. It's also something we touch, swipe and interact with every single day. And so it just shows how um, yeah, things that used to be windows can increasingly become screens. How does all this relate to you, just in a sentence or two, as a Christian person in the work that you do? Well, I think that it shows me that the world is moving fast and really busy and um, people are really longing to know who they are and get affirmation in the midst of that. And so as a Christian, I just um, know that my affirmation and my sense of identity comes from knowing who I am in Christ and that knowing your creator is the best place to begin and you find your meaning and purpose from that. And then you can um, yeah, in enjoy the community that, that, that we have, have today. Claire, thanks for joining us and, and giving us a, a, an insight, a touch into that world that you're, you're involved in. We wish you well in, in, in the work that you're doing and, you so and I'm much. sure the welcome that you'll get into many places to share that message. Please welcome now Wesley Impact on this programme, Grace Saunders with Man of Sorrows.
I chose to volunteer at Wesley Mission because I'm passionate about justice. I chose to volunteer with Wesley Mission because I've always wanted to work with people who have a disability. You meet friendly people. Uh, they're all people who are self-motivated and energetic. It not only gives me a purpose, it keeps me active and activity leads to longevity. Wesley Mission currently provide over 130 individual services with over 2,000 employees supported by over 3,000 volunteers to assist over 21,000 families and individuals each year. Whew, that's a lot of numbers. So as you can imagine, we are always looking for more volunteers to help. So please, volunteer today. Visit our website, wesleymission.org.au. You will not only be meeting new and interesting people, but you will be doing all the good you can, because every life matters. I'm continuing looking in Luke's Gospel, and one commentator draws the link between last week's passage of the Good Samaritan and this week's account. So I'm going to read now from Luke chapter 10, 38 through to 42. Very important uh, passage, but it's a very wonderful little cameo from Luke 10, 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister's left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Now, Let's compare, if we can, those two passages, the parable of the Good Samaritan and the story in the home of Martha and her sister Mary. In the Good Samaritan, the hero of the story is a man of action. But here, the heroine is one who sits and listens to Jesus. And you could say that the other sister is brought down a peg or two because of her overactivity. They're very, very different kind of focus. And it's not a case of one matters more than the other. Both are significant. Firstly, you, you'd need to recognise that it was a scandal that Jesus went to a single woman's home. That would not be an acceptable kind of behaviour in that time. The, the reality is that Jesus was well used to being considered to be scandalous in his behaviour. You remember when he uh, invited himself, if you like, to, to the tax collector's home. Um, that was cause all kinds of, of things. And when they describe what's wrong about Jesus' ministry, it was often that he was eating with the wrong kind of people. So meals were often the focus of so much that was important about Jesus' ministry. So it was a scandal. Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Now, this is the posture of a disciple, sitting to listen, not being concerned about other things. In that moment, focused upon what Jesus had to say. It's a lovely picture of what it is that Jesus wants from all our lives. We are prone very often to be like Martha, who was distracted. And though hospitable in many ways, and that hospitality is wonderful, it was not 
all that was required. And you know, you have to make a choice sometimes. Are you going to be full of active, have activitis as I call it, or are you going to be the kind of person who listens, receives, and wants to be sat at the feet of Jesus? Now, there are times in which all of us need to be busy. We need to be active. We need to make things happen, not just for things to happen to us. That's true but there are other times in which we must receive. This is an interesting passage when we've been talking to somebody about modern ways of communication, the kind of work patterns, the world in which we live today, which is full of rapid change and, and things happening at great speed. There are times when we're still in the midst of that world, have to sit and receive. And then we also recognize that this passage, like all the passages from chapter 9 through to 18, 19 in Luke, all lead to the cross. So they, they, they in a sense, build up together to, to make it possible for us to understand the challenge of what lies when it comes to the cross. And we realize that Jesus, even when he began that journey into the city, spent time with, with Lazarus and Martha and Mary, all related to, to, to one another, and spent time with them. It was such a very special place. But in that place, we see this juxtaposition, if you like, between two very different kinds of responses. One, you have the person full of activity, wanting to to do the practical thing for which we'd all say here here and yet at the other end the very important being willing to listen Jesus needed to be listened to I like to think that I think it's a very different take than some people present I think even Jesus our Savior our Lord needed people prepared to give him not only a place to have a meal but people just to listen to him at the end of what must have been a very busy day and the verse that stands out for me and stands out at the heart of the whole of this passage are, are these words. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Gosh, uh, one thing. Well, what is the one thing? Well, the one thing here is to listen. And we have so often to make choices between priorities in our lives, those things that we want to do, those things that we believe we ought to be doing between those things and the one thing that m is most important of all. And listening, being ready to receive, being ready to be fed, being ready to be uh, somebody who helps somebody in their need is something all of us have to discover day by day. So the home of Martha, where her sister Mary is, is, is found also, is a wonderful little picture. It's one of the great cameos, it seems to me, of the gospel. Just a few verses but pregnant with meaning, full of truth, and ready to teach us some very, very important things in terms of our discipleship, in terms of our listening. Have you thought about following Jesus in terms of all the things you can do? Or have you asked the question, what is the one thing above all else that I ought to be doing? For that's what Jesus is looking for. And the person in this story who exemplified that best is the one who sat at his feet. Few things are needed, and indeed, only one. If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or you can send an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. You can also connect to Keith's blog and stay up to date on all of the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. WesleyMission.org.au so don't hesitate to reach out if you'd like to comment on this episode of Wesley Impact or if you've got any questions about the Christian faith. The email address, of course, again, is there for you, impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Also, information of all that we do at Wesley Mission is available on our website at wesleymission.org.au. I hope you found the conversation today interesting and helpful, and I'm looking forward very much to sharing with you at the same time next week. Remember that verse, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Thank you again. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. May God bless you. Wesley Mission provides more than 38,000 hours of out-of-school care each year to young people. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.